we're back. Okay. Well, I'm told that we are audible now, and uh, the chat room can confirm, <laughs> maybe. Uh, but the, uh, let's see. Oh, well, I see video, but we're not in it. We're just pitch black. <laughs> but our names are there. Um, and we're going to do some flying spaghetti so. monster juju to keep the video <laughs> stream up. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure this isn't the fault of our crew. Uh, we're <laughs> going to go. Uh, we're going to go a few extra minutes at the end of the show to make sure that you get a reasonable length out of it. Um, should I just go ahead and start? And uh, we are resigned to having no video, so you will have to uh, do without our incredibly handsome faces. Yes, I know that's going to be a hardship for you. Yeah, poor, poor people. Uh, but Samuel from Minnesota, now you're on the air. How you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? Pretty good. How are you? Except for all the uh, havoc that that the, <laughs> that God is wreaking on our studio right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I just wanted to give you guys a little backstory about myself. Well, I'm 22, Christian, very uh -huh. tolerable of my family, and considering the indoctrination, I'm I'm pretty tolerable of it all. Okay. Um, anyway, my main question or statement um, is feeling like everything around us was created or a product of design, an innate feeling. And if I could just revert that really quickly, um, without any religious meddling, would wondering if natural processes ranging from life and reproduction and planet formation are a product of design in which life is not accidental. Well, I think you know our answer. We don't think so. Yeah, we don't see any, I mean, any we reason don't to, think that to think design. that. So, um, adolescence or maybe even childhood thinking or feeling that everything was created <laughs> is not innate? Uh, you know, adolescents are very egotistical, you may have noticed, <laughs> and they think a lot of things revolve around them. Uh, but that, uh, but I mean, the fact that they have certain feelings or come to some realizations doesn't mean that this is that this is an accurate understanding of the way that the world works. Okay, but would you say that having that sense of being created and all those processes I was talking about, um, having that sense, is that innate or not? Uh, well, I don't know. I That's don't, a good question. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. I mean, I don't. Uh, I don't I have don't... that feeling, so it's not innate in me personally. But that you know, whether it is uh, overall in humans, I, I don't know if I could address that or not. Yeah. When when you say okay. adolescence, you're talking about like teenagers, right? Um, I was more so saying childhood um, oh. to adolescence. Um, I I mean. I'm just thinking that by the time you're a teenager, uh, you know, it's more difficult to tease apart that difference between what's innate and what is taught. Because uh, by the time you get to that age, you, well, a lot of kids have already been taught a whole lot about, uh, about what they're supposed to believe as a religion. And so uh, the fact that all the people that you meet have that feeling could just be a product of their upbringing. Now, me personally, for instance, I was raised by a couple of non-believers. Uh, and while I sort of toyed with the idea that religion might be true because I was surrounded by it everywhere, uh, I never took it that seriously. And, and in fact, uh, you know, when I got philosophical as a teenager, it was, it was more along the lines of, man, it's so weird that everybody in the world has a brain, but I'm the only one who experiences my brain. Uh, but again, teenagers are really egotistical. And I, well, I wanted to bring up something that John said. He said that he doesn't feel that. Um, and he may not currently feel that, of course. But um, in terms of childhood and adolescence, like I brought up, Mm -hmm. um, have you, well, I guess, have you ever felt that? Um, maybe. I mean, to, to a certain extent, children uh, have a tendency to have magical thinking. <laughs> so uh, when magical. you're, when, yeah, when you're, when you're a young child, you, uh, well, for one thing, you kind of trust what the adults around you tell you. So if they're talking about uh, Santa Claus, you're more likely to believe that. But also, apart from what people tell you, <clears throat> You, you, uh, you haven't really attained critical thinking skills yet or even abstract thinking skills. So 
when you're a young child, you, at least what I've seen is that children embrace magical thinking in general, so they'll kind of believe in uh, uh, things that maybe aren't rational. Well, uh, you use the term magical, um, uh -huh. but, but um, I don't, I'm not really talking about so much as something like Jesus. I'm more talking about life and creation, or not even really creation, but how how it's not an accident, I would say. Um, also, Russell used um, that he's not so much entertained by religion, or he didn't used to be entertained by religion. And um, that still kind of didn't really answer my question, because this isn't really a religious question. Yeah, but I mean, I'm saying I don't really have the feeling that uh, everything was okay. designed either. And I think it kind of is a religious question when you boil it down, because of, to think that something's designed, that uh, I think the concept of a of a supernatural designer is a religious concept. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, do we draw conclusions from what is more likely to be true? Yes. Uh, some of the time. Okay. So it's, it's how you a... it's how you determine what, what's most likely that's the issue. That's the right. That's the okay. Problem. So, which brings me to my next question: Do you believe that life and planet formation and solar system formation is accidental? Well, I don't know. Do you believe that there was a designer for God? Um, I believe that solar systems across the universe are set up in similar ways to where we can draw a conclusion that this isn't an accident because accidents so, are really So, but you think correct. that, but I mean, by to follow this line of reasoning, you maybe mm -hmm. think that the that God having existed in the first place is an accident, as you put it, unless you think that there's a God God. Um, I don't so much think there's a God God. I think that there's just creation and design and oh. not so much intention, but not accidental. So, so God did have a designer. Somebody, some, some higher God made God. Um, I'm not, <laughs> no, I'm not even going to okay. try to entertain that, but... Well, um, well, I mean, why not? Because, like, what you're trying to argue here is that things mm -hmm. don't just happen to exist. Like, that would be ridiculous. But then you, you've solved the problem, allegedly, by inventing this incredibly powerful, intelligent, uh, magical, to use John's term, thing, and then you just don't want to think about where that came from. Right? That's true. Yeah, that's actually true. So, um, so if you accept the idea that some things just exist and you can't think about it, then why jump to a god, which we can't really, uh, which we don't really have any indication exists in the first place, instead of just saying, well, the universe has all those properties? Well, I don't, I don't so much, I don't know if I can even say that I, I'm not entertaining the idea of God, but just a process that is intentional. But you um, don't want to apply that argument to God. I mean, you don't want to think that God maybe had another God who made him. Well, that, that seems to be a different oh, question, shit. a part of a different equation. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, is it something that bothers you, or do you just wave it away and say it doesn't matter? Um, it's something that I think about, definitely. Okay. But I, I have one focus, and then I have, and you guys have another focus, and my focus is um, the processes in life, and the other focus in which I can't really... But not God. <laughs> But, but not whatever processes would cause that God to work the way it does. Because if you don't think that a God made God, then you must think that an infinite intelligence can just exist with no designer. Does that not I, seem weird to so you? Much, I, don't, I don't so much think that. I, I so uh -huh. much think that an event happened and we're still living through that event. What event? Um, well, scientists say the Big Bang. Okay. Where does a God factor into that? Um, 
He doesn't as far as I'm concerned. Oh, well, then we agree. That's a good call. No. Um. Well, I think you're probably disputing that there was a Big Bang, right? Oh. Um, I'm kind of, I'm, I kind of got lost, but basically my argument is that, because I've heard you guys on the show before say that it's an accident. Well, I wouldn't no, use, that. I wouldn't use that. that term. Yeah, no, I, don't, I think I, people put those words in our mouths, and we say, "Well, yeah, kinda," but that's um, not the way we I would, phrase it. Yeah, we would Sorry. we would say we would say natural processes or um, something to that effect, rather than accident. I think at least I would. Okay, and if these natural processes happen light years away from where we are, mm -hmm. um, does that kind of raise a red flag of intention or purpose or? Not, not, for, not for me. I mean, what, what to you would indicate intention, uh, that something was a result of intention and, uh, rather than not a result of intention? Well, um, I don't <clears throat> think accidents really fix themselves. And the earth, um, how it was formed, from what I've heard, um, the theory is that it was all molten and it cooled off and different weather happened and different changes happened. And I can't really tell you because I'm not credentialed in that but well i i'd like to suggest respectfully that maybe you should look into some of the books that discuss how that happened because i think it's a lot more complicated and weird and interesting to read about than you are probably thinking like don't just think this is beyond my understanding i, I mean it's useful to actually read up on what scientists happen, uh, think happened and how they came to that conclusion uh, mm -hmm. and, and not just say, I don't get it. Uh, because those are some cool th things to think about. And also, if you want to understand how atheists think, it's better to actually try to, uh, like, make an honest effort to get their point of view instead of just guessing and throwing out words like accident. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also, I just wanted to say this. Um, you see Venus and its atmosphere or lack thereof or whatever. Um, that would seem like an accident to me, something that didn't work out because what? Venus was like Earth at once, correct? Um, I don't know. No. <laughs> uh, not that I know of. Venus, was, Venus and Earth were not twins at first? Okay. Um, no. <laughs> I mean, for one thing, they're orbiting the sun at different distances, and so of course, uh, Venus, Venus is was, a lot hotter. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know okay, if Venus, Venus ever had water. Been, Venus hasn't always been hot, right? It used to have a different atmosphere and more, more like Earth. Um from what I've read. No, I don't think I've ever heard that anywhere. Okay. Uh, but, even um, if, but even if it did, what, uh, I was wondering where you were going with that. Yeah, um, I, w I would say um, that Venus is something that could be an accident because by following what I've read, that Venus was um, similar to Earth when it was early in formation, that um, Earth worked out and Venus didn't. So that would be an example of an accident. I think it depend, depends what you mean by worked out, because I think they both worked out because they, they did what they did. What they did. You're you're kind of you're you're almost assuming the intention as a as a you're you're pre-assuming that there was an intention in the first place, saying that well the the goal is to have a a, a planet that's habitable and uh, for life or whatever, and that's <coughs> uh, I think that assumption is faulty. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, being a human, it's not surprising that you think it's really interesting and important and significant uh, that humans exist. I do too. I like people. Uh, but that is my personal bias as a person. And I would ask, like, what's wrong with Venus? How do you know that the Earth isn't the accident? Well, I know that Earth isn't the accident because life was able to be sustained and the mm -hmm. whole star but again is, that's just assuming that life being sustained is a motivation instead of a byproduct 
Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, obviously, Venus, we like it because we're here and we're humans, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that yeah. that's that's a goal of some some over overreaching goal that uh, planet creation is in or you know is is process is there to sustain human life. Yeah, that's thought, that's, thought, so, that's a self centered thing if you look at um, it apart from your own situation of being a human. Yeah, the thought experiment, what if there is a God, but he's like, you know, asteroid 5219b is the greatest thing I ever made. Now, Earth, <laughs> it's got all these parasites on it. That, that was obviously a screw up. But boy, that asteroid 5219b, it's, it's beautiful. It's a work of art, and it's everything I want this universe to be about. <laughs> then Earth, what? Earth would well, be great if those humans hadn't come along yeah. and ruined it. Well, again, I'm not claiming that God has any characteristics whatsoever. I know. Um, <laughs> makes the conversation kind of hard to have because, uh, I mean, I, I feel like you have that point in the back of your mind, but you don't want to say it. Um, I, I guess it's more so just feeling, feeling is, or emotion is just what's holding me back. But, um, like, I wanted to bring it back to Venus for a second. I know that when Venus was forming, or after it formed, that the magnetic field was lost, which in turn caused Venus to be as hot as it is. Okay. Can uh, we agree with that? Venus is as hot as it is because it's closer Close to, to the, the sun. sun. Yeah, that's what I would think. The, the radiation that it gets falls off with, it, shoot, is it the square or the cube of the distance? I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm, I was, started as a physics major, but it's been a long time. <laughs> Uh, but, I mean, the, the fact that Venus is hot has way more to do with how close it has to the nearest heat source uh, than to uh, what the atmosphere is. So, I, I don't but, uh, know what you've read, uh, and I freely admit that I'm not an expert on planetary science, uh, mm, but yeah. that sounds unlikely to me. Okay, and well, it, and this if is I, just for me watching the Planets documentary the other day and me just spewing what I've heard from that. But um, well, and if I, I that, it, and if I were to look at the just say just look at our solar system for example, you have we have one planet <laughs> that has uh, life on it, and and as far as we know, it's the only one. Um, I would think that it's us that's the outlier. It's the the other planets formed and they don't support life, so. To say that we, well, we we just made a discovery from the Trappist telescope that there are like seven Earth-like planets lined up, and three of them are in the Goldilocks zone for habitability. Okay. So, do we so know yet that there at, isn't life on those planets? I mean, uh, that seems like a level can, of detail. Are, we don't, but we can likely conclude that because of our solar system and our host star, and how our solar system is set up similar to a way that theirs is and that there are three planets in the habitable zone that there is more likely to be life on those planets, correct? Well, no. At, at least <laughs> maybe life that's similar to, to the life that's here. If there is life, but I mean there were, uh, there were a complicated series of things that were not necessarily a foregone conclusion uh, right. to get mm -hmm. to this point. Yeah. And then we're sitting here as the end result of that process and thinking, boy, it's great that this, uh, you know, that this process led to something exactly like me. So clearly I'm the most important thing in the universe. Yeah, that could have, that could have gone wrong at any point in the process maybe. In, in lots maybe. of ways. Like or saying, life could be incredibly can't. common. We don't know. Exactly. So, but wouldn't it be more likely that there is life than there? Then it's less likely that there is life. Uh, not, uh, not overall. <laughs> I think that life is probably extremely rare. Let Let me put this a different way. Um, suppose that uh, you just hit the reset button on Earth and mm. uh, and started over from the beginning of, let's say, human history, and replayed everything uh, slightly altered in some way. Do you think that the movie Star Wars would have been made? I mean, so there's no. a very specific thing that is the end result. Do you think that would happen? Um, 
No. Okay. So the analogy that I want you to think about is to consider the human race or even mammals or however far you back you want to go. Think of that result as Star Wars and think, you know, if you were to replay everything, maybe it would all happen the same way, but maybe nothing like this would happen. We don't know. If the big but we do know where there's water, there is life. No, correct? we don't, because there's water no. on Mars and there's no life there. Yeah, not necessarily. It just, it's one of the components. Wait, is there water on Mars? Shoot, I hope I didn't screw that up. <laughs> but if um, there was. Water next combined with being in the habitable, habitable zone next to the host star, <laughs> I, I believe that's a great recipe for life. You can't make that as a general statement because we only have one example. Yeah. Yeah, and ours worked, right? Yeah, but uh -huh. it could be it could be ex <clears throat> extremely rare for even right. even if you have right. the right conditions. We don't know. We 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 haven't found another planet that we absolutely know has any kind of life on it yet. Right, mm -hmm. so we could be the only planet in the entire universe with life, or they could be all over the place, or somewhere in between. Uh, and you can't just like make sweeping generalizations about how life comes about like all over the universe if you only know one planet where it ever happened. Well, if life has came from our planet and we know all the ingredients from our planet to make life. No, we do, I mean, that's another thing that I don't think you're quite getting about science. We know some of the details and we can kind of fill things in, but I don't think you'd ever find a scientist who would say, for sure we know how this happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, well, I guess my last thing, I only have one more question. Well, make, um, it, make it short because uh, I yeah, mean, I, it's a good conversation, uh, but we have yeah. other callers. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you can accept that there is no God with no definitive proof, then why do you criticize those that are benign in their belief who accept that there is a God with no proof? John, you take it. I don't, I don't consider myself as accepting that there is no God. I, 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 don't have a, I don't have a belief in a God until I see some evidence or reason that there is one. Okay. Um, so I, I would look at both situations the same. It's not a good, it's not a good idea to, to believe something for which you have no evidence. Well, I guess my question was more centered for an atheist then. We are uh, atheists. That's, that's what atheist means. Atheist means oh, not that. believing in God. Okay. So is agnosticism, because it sounded like to me he said he was uh, unsure. <clears throat> I'm going to cut past this and recommend you go to ironchariots.org and search for a, uh, uh, an article titled uh, Dude, Atheist I know Versus what agnosticism Agnostic. And atheism is. Okay. I'm just asking because his answer seemed <laughs> yeah. like he came off it from an agnostic point of view. Uh, I, I think you should read that article. Thanks for calling. Right. I'm, Thanks. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm an agnostic atheist. They're not, yeah. they're not mutually exclusive. Right. All right. Uh, hmm. you want to go through uh, your story for a few minutes? Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah, I can cover it quickly because uh, when uh, Shirley was on earlier, she was mentioning <laughs> the stuff that's going on in the schools there, and uh, that's not going on in just in Puerto Rico. That's here in the U.S. Here in the well, in the mainland, the, the mainland <laughs> U.S., the uh, the fifty states as well, and. Uh, I don't usually bring current events into the show, but this one really made my blood boil, so I, I, I wanted to mention it because this stuff's going on. Uh, this comes from uh, Hammond Meta's Friendly Atheist blog, uh, and it's about a, a student who's suing her high school in uh, the Delta County School District in Colorado. Uh, her name's Sydney Fisk, and she's, uh, she's actually in college now, but you know the wheels of justice turn slowly, so there's this lawsuit going on about uh, what's going on in the public schools there. And uh, you know, I just wanted to to give a brief rundown on what this is because this is like the one of the most egregious cases I've heard of. I know a lot of schools, especially in in the South, do this kind of stuff now and then. But uh, the, the what was going on in her school? Uh, teachers at the school openly discussed their Christian faith and church attendance during classes. School board members also did that. 
Uh, one board member raised her Christian belief that transgender students should be castrated. Uh, a middle school teacher sponsored Bible study classes before the start of the day, enticing students with donuts to, to attend sessions. Uh, when Sidney Fisk uh, spoke out against a, an amendment, uh, a personhood amendment that would have treated fetuses as humans, making abortions more difficult to obtain, one of her teachers reprimanded her publicly for wearing a shirt, urging people <coughs> to vote no. Uh, the teacher added, God gives babies life and abortion is murder. Uh, the same teacher, uh, along with Fisk's guidance counselor, had a private meeting with her months later where they criticized her attitude. They showed a picture she had posted on her private Instagram account in which she said she wasn't a fan of the school. The counselor added that if Fisk's attitude didn't change, she would have to ruin her position in student government and ruin her grant opportunities. Mm, the, counselor also, the counselor also threatened to revoke letters of recommendation for college. Uh, Sydney tried to begin a secular student alliance group, uh, couldn't find a faculty sponsor, and her government teacher told her that the club did not line up with community and school values. Uh, the school invited Christian abstinence-only speaker to give a talk. Uh, she was told the speeches wouldn't be religious, and of course, when they were made, they were full of religion. Uh, they brought in another speaker to talk about his time as a soldier and why Jesus was great. Uh, and he was invited in to talk about the problems of drug use, but he had absolutely no qualifications to talk about drug use. Uh, when Fisk pointed that out, she was reprimanded by her teacher. Uh, this one bothered me the most. Uh, <coughs> her grade in her government class was dropped from a near perfect 98% to 70% not based on any exam or paper, but uh, when she asked her teacher and principal told her in private that the newspaper article she wrote for, uh, about the school complaining about their policies was part of the reason. That's and, really sleazy. And they cited her questioning of authority, particularly religious authority, and that she was stirring the pot. Uh, yeah. office and, uh, uh, and also, I read down here after they like screwed with her grades. Uh, when she was applying to college, she had to submit counselors' letters, and they didn't just tell her no. They they accepted and then stalled on it, and then uh, may have sent bad recommendations, which kept her out of a couple of colleges. Pro they think. Right, and she wanted to apply for a couple of scholarships, and she that she qualified on based on her mm -hmm. ACT scores and her family income. Uh, she's, she's saying that she doesn't believe that those applications were even submitted by the adults in the school. Oh. Uh, so this kind of stuff's going on in public schools. Uh, she's filing a lawsuit, which is great. You know, kudos to you. <coughs> they, this stuff needs to be challenged at every, uh, at every point that it happens. This is just, this is clearly blatant, uh, religiously based discrimination. So I want to give Sydney a shout out. Say, uh, her, there's a, her group in Colorado, uh, Atheists and Freethinkers of Western Colorado, I believe it is, uh, set up a, a scholarship fund, and they ended up giving her, I think, raising four thousand dollars to make up for the uh, scholarships that she was denied <coughs> uh, because of her religious views. So uh, I just, you know, I wanted to publicly, personally support her and, and her efforts because this stuff needs to be called out when it happens so yeah that's that <laughs> <laughs> hope she wins yeah Shaq in North Carolina hey how you guys doing good doing fine Look, thanks looks like we, our video has been up for a while so that's good news yeah the uh, the chat room all said they were praying for us to stay up so that must have made the difference I saw it <laughs> Um, well, I like to, um, you know, refer to myself as an atheist. Well, I am an atheist now, but I kind of kept jumping from back back and forth between um, theism and atheist. But um, I, something that really one of the biggest things that that was in my struggle of trying to just totally leave theism is. Um, I just wanted to tell you guys a story about something that happened between me and my girlfriend one time. We was leaving a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
we was leaving a restaurant and then like we walked out and we was like basically it was like cars passing by so um it was like by the mall so we were just basically just waiting by the curb and then there was a guy who um basically he was just standing there and then like so we started walking towards the car he started following us and he was like um hey y'all like you know just talking to us and was like how can i pray for you guys today so i was like i mean my girlfriend she's like a christian and she believes all this stuff so um I, i'm just walking i'm like well we about to drive back home so i guess you know just prayers for safety travel so I, you know just to get him out of here so um he so then he says um oh, okay well he said okay i'll pray for that and he was like um, <clears throat> are any of you guys um like sick or you guys have any like like illness or anything and at the time my girlfriend was going through like a real bad cold so um and she like missed a couple of days of work for it and everything so so um i was like yeah well my girlfriend she's sick and um he was like okay and he was like what about physical pain do any of you guys have like any like back problems or anything like that and i was like um i said well i have scoliosis so you know so that's you know that's where you know so he was like, okay, okay, cool. And then he um like looked at my girlfriend, like gave her like a weird look, and he was like, um, he said, he said, do you like kids? And then I was, and then my girlfriend said, yeah. I, um, and he was like, but not just kids. Like you have like a like a soft spot in your heart for like babies. And she was like, yeah. But what's crazy is my girlfriend, her family owns a daycare that she was working at at the time, and she worked in the baby room, which was like. Which was just like blew my mind. It was crazy. So, um, so I was like, you know, wow, or whatever. So then he like, um, he looked at me and he was like, and he was like, um, do you, he said, um, do you have like a, he said, you have a younger brother, right? And I was like, yeah. He was like, probably about three, four years younger. And I said, yeah, I have a little brother and he's four years younger than me. And he was like, and he was like, he said, you probably don't want him, you know, doing the, um, making some of the same mistakes you made. And then it was kind of crazy because, like, a week before that, I was talking to my little brother on the phone because I was in, um, I was like, this was like my junior year in college. And um, my little brother was just coming out of high school. So I was, tell he was getting ready to come to college. And I was telling him, like, mistakes not to make, you know, stuff like that. So um, then he, then, like, the last thing he looked at me and said, he was like, um, he said, um, he said, yeah, man, he said, um, he said, you probably, well, he said, you have, um, you're struggling in your faith with God, right? And I was like, yes. I was like, I don't really, I don't really believe that. And he was like, he said, yeah. He was like, um, God just wants you to know that He loves, that He that He loves you still, and He's going to continue to love you. And then I was like, wow, okay, or whatever. But and then he was like, I'm sorry for offending you guys, but like, I but I just saw you guys over there, and um, something told me to come pray for you guys. And ever since I've been over here, God has been speaking to me. And I and so he like basically told us a prayer, and we walked off like. But I was just wondering, like, and I know that's kind of like an anecdotal testimony, you know, as far as you know the way you guys see it, because you guys have no reason to to like really believe that he did that. But for me, I mean, it kind of it 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 happened so. I mean, I was just wondering if something like that happened. Like, what would you, how would you process that? Like, how would you, and 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 mind you, I don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. So, uh, first thing I want to ask. I mean, I don't want to assume that you have a stalker, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, but the main thing I wanted to ask is, have you heard of cold reading? Yeah, <laughs> I wrote that um, down. Shoot. Maybe you should take it there. <laughs> oh, no, go ahead. Fin no, finish your thought. What? Go ahead. So have you? Have I what? Have you heard of cold reading? No, I haven't. So there are professional psychics, uh, you know, if, and let's put some quotes around the word psychics. Um, <sighs> um, there are a lot of documented cases of, cases of this happening where basically um, if you call a phone psychic or, um, uh, or you go to a reading in one of those cheap storefronts and they say they're going to tell your future, um, the, uh, a lot of times what they will do is kind of fish for information in a way that you don't notice it happening. 
Uh, I mean, for one thing, a, a statement like, I bet you're struggling with your faith is a really easy one to make because I think even a committed religious person would, uh, would dig for something in the back of their mind that, uh, I mean, like everybody struggles with their faith at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so there are the kind of statements that are so vague uh, that they could apply to absolutely everybody. And mm -hmm. if you're a psychic, like throwing out something random, like for instance, uh, I bet you have a little brother. Again, that's true for a lot of people, but if you had <laughs> said no, they can still recover because they were like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean a brother. Let me, let me think again. You have a sibling, right? And you could mm -hmm. be like, no, I don't have any siblings, but I have a niece I'm real close to. And they're like, yeah, I was thinking of your <laughs> niece. Um, <laughs> like, when it lands, when it feels like it's very specific personal information about you, the uh -huh. human mind has a way of filling in the details and thinking that they know uh, that they know a lot more about you when, in fact, they just maybe they do, maybe that guy does that to everybody he meets uh -huh. for all you know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And another good example is, yeah. uh, I bet you like babies. Well, most people would probably say they like babies. <laughs> if he had yeah, said, who if would he say, no, I hate babies. If he said, I, I bet you work in a, in a daycare center taking care of babies, that would be a lot more impressive. Right. But the fact mm -hmm. that, that, yeah, I like babies, and, and, then that, uh, and then it pops into her head, hey, you know, I work with babies. That, that's remarkable. But he didn't say that. Mm -hmm. He just said, I bet you like babies. So that's right. another cold mm -hmm. reading technique is you say something really general, and then people kind of kind of try to fit that in uh, mm -hmm. to, to their lives. And, and then it sort of seems like a hit when it really isn't. Also, another thing is, like you, you said, like that me and John, we have no way of knowing that this has actually happened. I don't mm -hmm. doubt that, uh, that you described it pretty much as you remember it. But there's another thing that happens because since people look for patterns in things, a lot of times uh, they will retroactively adjust their memories because the story sounds cooler in their heads. Uh, mm -hmm. So I've heard this from professional stage magicians, which is that, you know, I did this pretty simple, straight up uh, conjuring, a sleight of hand trick. And then later I heard this guy describe the trick to his friend and he added all this detail that it, I didn't even do and it made the trick sound way more impressive and I just mm -hmm. let it go and didn't let it happen because hey, who doesn't want to sound like a better magician? Yeah. People do that and it's not, uh, like, it's not a criticism of your memory in particular, it's just uh, you ought to be aware that this can happen because memories are, are vague and malleable. malleable. Yeah, I, so I, I understand that, but I mean, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to come as like that. Like, I didn't, like, I wasn't even believing in that stuff anyway. Yeah, and but I even if you don't want to, uh, uh -huh. your mind sometimes does it for you. Okay, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Well, thank you. I kind of went through, like, a um, process. I, I did believe in God, and then I kind of, like, did research on the Bible. Then I was thinking, oh, uh, the Bible is terrible because, you know, I'm, I'm African-American, and then... Yeah. And, you know, as far as, like, you know, the whole slavery thing and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. and I just, and with the Bible being, a, you know, a part of that, I used to always ask people, like, if a, if a slave owner is reading this Bible and a black person is reading, and an African American is reading this Bible, like, and he sees the thing about slavery, like, like you know, he's going to think what he's doing is right and stuff like that. So I kind of went through that. And then uh, oh, I yeah, and a, historically, a there are a lot of slave owners who, who wrote at great length about how much the Bible justified them. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. that's not that. just speculating. Yeah. And then I kind of, and then I went through this stage of like, like, I have no reason, you know, like, with how do I know that the Bible's true and, and how do I know that, that um that all of these things are are as accurate as people think. And I used to always wonder like how people used to I mean how people are like I used to always think, even when I was growing up, I was like, how did how do other people in there who weren't Christians who believe their own religion, how were they like just as confident as 
like mm-hmm. all these other Christians who think that they're right. You know what I mean? Yes, so I used to always exactly. mm-hmm. just, I used to always just, they used to always blow my mind because I, I know people aren't like just that crazy, like to where, you know what I mean? So I just kind of realized that like, you know, most of the time the household that you're brought up in is, is kind of what you're going to be. That's what you're going to, yep. most of the time, not in all cases, but a lot of the time that's what you are, you know, Talk to believe so right i kind of did more research on it i watched the, um a lot of you guys shows um you know i'm a big fan of the of the show and stuff like that and i learned Thank a lot and, and i think it's really helped me a lot and and you know my my girlfriend thinks that i'm working for the devil but <laughs> <laughs> but i mean she's still with me so i so maybe maybe it it ain't that big of a deal. <laughs> yeah. Well, but um, ho- hope your relationship is uh, solid enough to uh, last through that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I do too. But and keep I mean, and keep and keep, and keep thinking okay. about it. Keep questioning it. That's good that you're examining stuff that you're told. And she, you know, and that's the thing that gets me. Like I don't understand why some like why like why some Christians like like they don't even want to hear like any possibility. Like I like I used to always tell my girlfriend, whether you disagree or or agree, like you should still want to get as much information to form your own decision instead of just right. ever since you're born, all you're taught is everything in the Bible is true, everything in the Bible is true. Like you need to form your own opinion and I thought you guys you guys show really helped me out um with that. So I just Good. wanna tell you guys thank you and you know keep doing what you're doing and um thank you for answering my call. Well thank you. Right. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Bye. Uh yeah, I hope he reads up on cold reading because it's actually very interesting and very tricky. Yeah, and some people are really, really good at it. <laughs> There's yeah. the, who's the guy, the John, John Edwards? Yeah, he wasn't even all that good at it, honestly. <laughs> it, let's see, John Edwards was the politician and John Edward, I think, was the TV psychic. Oh, okay, okay. But I mean, John Edward... Not only did he cold read, but he would go through like hours and hours of interview and just throw out the video of people where he just wildly missed the mark. So yeah. he could selectively edit to make himself look good. Yeah. Um, also, speaking of doing research on stuff, uh, uh, <laughs> I just threw this thing out off the top of my head. Uh, there is, in fact, uh, water on Mars in the form of ice anyway and That's vapor right. in the atmosphere. Uh, there don't seem to be any large bodies of water on Mars. However, there is a Doctor Who episode called The Waters of Mars. So, mm. very significant. <laughs> um so, who's been on for a long time? David, uh, Arkansas. Hello. Hey, David. Or is it yeah. Arizona? Can you hear me? Arkansas, yeah. Uh, Arkansas. It's Arkansas. Can you hear yeah. me good? Yeah. I can hear you. Okay, great. Well, um, what I wanted to ask was a question that really is irrespective of my own beliefs. I mostly just want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh-huh. But um, do you guys feel that fundamentalism is as bad as a more moderated or reformed uh, form of religion? I mean, is that the true evil, or do you guys feel like they are, you know, equally bad, equally destructive to society? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, fundamental, fundamentalism and literalism. Right. Kind of a deal. It's complicated because I know, you know, mm-hmm. playing devil's advocate, so I'm just spoiling, no, I don't think that uh, moderate religious people are as harmful and destructive as fundamentalists. Uh, okay. But talking to atheists who do think that, the argument that they would make is that uh, the, the moderates normalize religion. And so the, the basic problem overall is uh, believing things that aren't true, being gullible, and and having a willingness to accept nonsense into your thought, uh, into your thoughts, and so okay. the idea being that the moderates give cover to the fundamentalists and make the fundamentalism possible, or, or make it possible for them to take hold. That said, <laughs> the fact that fundamentalism takes hold anywhere is the serious problem. Um, And uh, I I feel like the the momentum and direction of people's beliefs may be more important uh, than 
than the actual particular belief that they happen to be at. Because human interaction is very, very complicated. And I would like to have everybody believe true things and not believe false things. But that's never going to happen because everybody is working on incomplete information. Fundamentalism is harmful because it uh, actively, uh, like fundamentalists actively seek to uh, legally enforce their stupid beliefs on other people. Uh, and they, in some cases, like persecute uh, people who believe differently or, or have a different sexual orientation or they subjugate women. And the fact that people actually lose their rights or don't have as much freedom as they would otherwise is the real harm of fundamentalism. Yeah. Now, if a fundamentalist mm, abandoned fundamentalism and moved off to this sort of vague, liberal, uh, uh, not very serious belief in some force in the universe, are they still believing irrational stuff? Sure. But am I going to tell them that move you made, now you're even worse, or it didn't make any difference, you're just as bad as you were before. I don't see it that way. I think that uh, it is a reduction of the amount of irrational stuff they believe or the, the, uh, how seriously they take it. And I think less of that is always a good thing. John, what do you think? Yeah, I think what Russell alluded to is the harm is not the fundamental fundamentalism itself. It's that it's it's what actions it informs. So if somebody's a really fundamentalist, Bible literist, literalist, thinks that it's inerrant and uh, homosexuals should be put to death, and if they think that, that's one thing. Uh, if they go out into society and try to impose that on everybody, that's, that's the higher level of danger. So it's, it's more than just being a fundamentalist. It's what are, you, what are you gonna do with that that's causing the harm? And in that respect, moderates don't, don't go out and seek to uh, cause as much harm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I guess that was another way to say that is that um, if, if like a more moderate, I don't know, maybe you called it wishy-washy, I don't remember, but <laughs> I might have religion, said that. kind of, maybe, but uh, is it, basically just within the spectrum. I know that, like you said, some of your harder atheist friends would disagree and maybe say that like it's still bad, and I, I'm not, I'm mostly just staying away from that, but, um, or not having an opinion on that part, but just whether it's within the spectrum of like a, not necessarily a perfect society, but just an okay society, that one that does kind of generally promote the general welfare, basically. Yeah, and I think that in a lot of cases, uh, given the various people I know who are and aren't religious, uh, I, <laughs> I like people who have some amount of religious belief that they will accept being criticized or ribbed about, but still basically treat other people well and, and are kind of live and let live and care about doing stuff like helping people in Puerto Rico. Uh, like, I like those people more than uh, if I knew a very hardcore atheist who I totally agreed with about God but is kind of a jerk <laughs> to, yeah. to okay. like everybody, to me and other people. Sure. And a lot of times people, okay. people need a transition, so uh, a lot of times they'll, they'll be, say, uh, and I hear this story a lot, there's somebody who's really fundamentally religious, and then they go through a, a change process, and they might uh, try a more moderate religion or set of beliefs on for a while, and you know, they, it's really unusual for a fundamentalist to immediately jump to, to not believing. Uh, so that moder moderate those moderate religions give them sort of an opportunity to transition. So they, they your you know, beliefs tend to change slowly. So uh, people, individuals, and society as a whole can kind of transition to a more secular position by going through those moderate <laughs> steps. And so on, from that aspect, I, I kind of applaud somebody who's willing to at least moderate their views first, and, and while they then think about where they are now, and then maybe transition to something a little more secular uh, later. Okay. Yeah, be, well, I've, I, I've heard of a lot of people who have uh, gradually abandoned religion, and it almost always is a gradual process 
where they where they think, well, I don't really believe in that hell stuff because that's kind of monstrous, and I can't believe in a god who would do that sort of thing. But then once they've abandoned that, they keep going and are like, well, I, you know, I always heard that hell was real. If I reject that, why do I still believe in the other stuff? Yeah. And I'm not going to attack somebody for going through that transition if they're not going through it as fast as I think they should. It, it's hard to let go of everything at once. I, I okay. say I'm not going to attack them, but I'm still going to jump on their their beliefs that I don't agree with. When somebody calls in and says, hey, I don't agree with that fundamentalist who calls, but let me tell you what I do think, I mean, I'm still all over them. <laughs> sure. I mean, that's, you know, just criticizing an opinion or an idea. Right. I get that. <clears throat> um, and that kind of brought up an interesting question, and this is just kind of in your opinion from what you've seen. Um, do you think that there it's easier to kind of like or have there been more people who have changed from a fundamentalist, literalist version to non-belief? Or is that kind of easier than someone who has more of a moderate uh, position and then changing them to non-belief? Just in your opinion, have you seen more go from a harder stance to non-belief or a moderate position to non-belief? Uh, I don't know. I mean... My, my, my sense okay. is mo that moderates, it's probably more common with somebody who starts off with a moderate belief because they're already kind of open to question. Whereas, yeah. whereas somebody who's really fundamentalist uh, tend to be more closed-minded, but then also there's a backlash, like the, the <laughs> Phelps family. You oh, know, yeah. half, of, half of their kids completely abandoned that, and that was like one of the most fundamentalist versions of Christianity that there could be. So Yeah, if you ever get around to it, read a New York Times article about someone named uh, Megan Phelps, I believe, right? Uh -huh. Because she had a wonderful story about being this hardcore fundamentalist and being weaned off of it by some friends who who talked her through it, even while she was telling them that God hated them and, and she hoped they go uh, they burn forever. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'll uh, look that up. And, and I, I have, have known, fun. personally, it's rare, but I've known uh, people who went all the way from fundamentalist to atheist, uh, like Jerry DeWitt uh, mm -hmm. and like uh, Rich Lyons. And let me tell you, a deconverted fundamentalist gets pretty hardcore about atheism. They, <laughs> they swing that enthusiasm all the way over in the other direction. But the yeah, ones I've met ha have. Yeah. Okay. And then I have one more question for you guys, and uh, maybe I just don't understand this enough or my question is a little nonsensical, but <clears throat> is there a different level of certainty when talking about proving something scientifically versus proving something logically? Or does that question not make any sense? Uh, it makes sense because, I mean, often when you're proving something logically, you're dealing with pure math. Uh, but but the problem with that, and I mean, things that you conclude logically are more sound conclusions as long as you're starting with the right assumptions. But the problem with yeah. not thinking about things scientifically is that you can construct this elaborate model in your head, which is consistent, but it's got no relationship to anything you've observed. And okay. I think a lot of theist uh, apologetic arguments go that way and just construct this very self-contained logical argument, but they're starting from bad assumptions, and so none of it makes sense. All right, and my question was more in regard to people who are trying to either disprove God, if, they, if there's some different level of certainty in your guys' opinion between saying, oh, I'm going to disprove God. Uh, scientifically, which I don't think is possible, versus saying I'm going to try and disprove God logically, and that may also not be possible. But I mean, I, just yeah, I don't, I don't buy it. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so uh, yeah, we're all, basically all I have, we're almost but, um, out of time. <laughs> yeah, sure. That story about that girl at that school—that's terrible, and that never should have happened. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, sorry about that girl, but yeah, thanks. I mean, that's all I got. I just wanted to hear your guys' opinion on a few things. Okay, thanks Great. for calling. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.
All right, so uh, we would be a little bit over time right now, uh, but we also had all that technical difficulty right in the middle of the show. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to take one more call, but I'm going to, it's going to come with a content notice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of those uh, uh, safe space, whatever. <laughs> uh, I, and I want to preface this by saying I did ask the call screeners already today to hang up on one other person who's an annoying repeat caller that uh, that the audience doesn't like to hear from. Uh, but if you don't like hearing people of, of dubious sincerity calling over and over again, the show's over. Great show. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> uh, if you do, I am time boxing this to five minutes. Hello, Hamish from Scotland. We meet again, Russell. How are you doing? You got five minutes, and I'm not kidding about that. <laughs> well, I'm deeply offended by the way you introduced me. Of but course I'm... you are. You're deeply offended every time I talk to you. <laughs> Allow me to proceed. I have a challenge for the atheists. Okay. Proof that they are absolutely immoral okay. and hypocritical, uh -huh. or that they are secretly believers. Okay. Let us have it. Or is that yes. it? Chris, Christians are able to justify animal agriculture. Atheists are not. What? There is no, there is no trait present in an animal which, if present in a human, would permit them to fact. Basically, what I'm saying is, why is it okay to eat animals but not humans? Why wouldn't it be? Because they are sentient creatures <clears throat> who suffer. Um, shrimp? Uh, by the way, you're opening up a huge can of worms because we have a lot of vegetarian and vegan viewers who are totally on board with you. And they will email us to tell us that we're immoral jerks and we should have listened to you. But, and, and we've um, heard and we've heard that exact argument yep. in the same words from vegans <laughs> about the traits. True. Answer this: uh -huh. Why is it okay to farm a cow but not a human? Um, because cows have not been able to express that they don't want to be eaten, and well, I can yes, already feel can. the emails coming in. For <laughs> goodness' sake. So, uh, do you think? I'm we, we as a society, have come to an agreement that uh, everybody who has a say in the matter is worse off uh, if we just allow killing and stealing, which is why pre-Judeo-Christian uh, societies like, uh, like the one under the Code of Hammurabi, for instance, already had rules about no killing and no stealing. And, and like ancient Chinese cultures that way predated the Old Testament also had those kind of rules uh, because we've recognized that this is just a more comfortable way for us to live. So you said that cows cannot express that they do not wish to be consumed and farmed in factory farms, correct? Um, I said something like that. I'm uh, I'm stepping back and and thinking very carefully about how much to agree with this thing I just said. Well, Hamish, so ha right. Hamish, I'm really curious because the 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 angle that you bring to this mm -hmm. that isn't just like all the other times we've argued this is that you say Christians can justify uh, yes. eating animals. So I'm, 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 us. Yes. I'm curious what we the. Well, we have Christian morality is always God says so. Yes, but the atheists cannot justify consuming and farming animals. You said... Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. If anything, I would think your argument is that atheists have no reason not to eat animals. And they have no reason not to eat other people. So it feels like what you should be arguing is why we don't eat people, because... It, if, as you say, we have no morals, then, my, then my what position, reason would we have not to eat animals? We do, we do not eat people because we have souls. Well, but no, but you, from the atheist point of view. I don't, yes, from the atheist point of view, there is no good reason to farm animals but not humans. Yeah, there is. 
I mean, it is well, a very efficient way to stay alive. I don't want to, from I, our point of view. I don't want to be farmed. It is not. It is not. Meat is carcinogenic, and <laughs> it takes okay. up a lot of. It's not good for the environment. Okay. But at but this slavery point, was good. slavery <laughs> was good for those reasons right. that you brought up. It was efficient for some things. So, can you agree that there that from an atheist point of view? And barring all the vegan arguments, uh, there was no reason for an early hunter-gatherer society not to just kill this convenient source of protein and eat it because it's way easier than collecting a bunch of berries. Perhaps it was okay for them, but we okay. live in a first world country and it's a very different yeah. context. Well, we're creatures of habit. Are you a vegan? Slavery was a habit. True. Are you a vegan? I'm a Christian, so no, but I have a justification. <laughs> I know Christian religion. vegans. What are you talking about? So, so, it's, not, so it's not carcinogenic if you're a Christian? <laughs> God provides a way. Okay. And that's your five minutes. Thanks for calling. <laughs> anyway, so that's really our show. Okay. And uh, thanks for joining me, John. <laughs> Thank you. That was fun. Yep. Uh, that's the atheist experience. See you next week. Join us for dinner. Start of India, where we'll, where you can be a vegan if you want to. Yep, you can eat meat or not eat meat. Ugh, and I forgot you are vegetarian. No, I, I'm not anymore. I was a oh. vegan for nine years, but I'm not. I fell, huh. I fell off that wagon. Okay. <laughs> uh, that. Is, so if you uh, want to write to us, that email is Ken Ham at AnswersInGenesis.org. <laughs>